So this is my Evanard 60 horsepower that you saw me working on. I, uh, well, you didn't see me working on it, but you saw me pick it up a while ago. So I'll be, uh, got some parts for it, so I'm going to kind of do a little test and see what kind of condition it's in. So the first thing I want to do is get the coils and power packs back on. Well, power pack back on. <clears throat> I'm going to see if the uh, condition system still works. I'm going to guess that it does, but you never know. Coils. Pack wire. Coil. Now we're going to get some battery cables. Let's hook up the negative here. Alright, battery cables are connected. Spark plugs are loose, so we're going to pull those out. Top ones is. Screw in our compression gauge. Spark tester. Just gotta find a good ground now. Nothing better than the battery cable. Perfect. Alright, I have the uh, battery on the bench hooked up to the battery cables. And we'll do our test the old-fashioned way. So we have no spark, but no big deal. And we have almost 150 PSI. Almost. 140-ish. Keep in mind, cold dry test. So that's good. I actually wasn't expecting it to be that high. See what our bottom says. Along with our bottom spark. It's kind of weird there's no spark, honestly. I was really hoping there would be. Alright, let's try it again. Best way in the world, but it works. And we're a little bit shy of 150. So, top's a little bit less than the bottom, which is about normal. But I didn't see if it was sparking, so I'm going to check the footage later. But our power head's pretty, pretty good internally. Um, probably a good motor. We know it needs a starter solenoid, so. Otherwise, might be okay. Looks good. So I decided I wanted to take a look at the lower unit fluid. I uh, pulled the prop off. Just to check the prop shaft, in case you're wondering why I did that. And then I uh, noticed not a drip of fluid came out. Not a drop. Like, absolutely, completely dry. Like, nothing. So that made me think something might be kind of wrong. So I hooked up the pressure tester, and I'll, I'll show you what I found. Right, let me give me a couple of pumps here. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. See it? So that's pretty uncool. Don't know how it happened yet. Water could have frozen there. Could have hit something. I don't know, but either way, it's a, it's a serious problem. So I'm going to get the lower off, get it on the holding fixture, and we'll uh, see what the gears inside look like.
So to give you an idea of how nice this engine is, look at this anode. You think that ever saw any salt? No. There is a O-ring at the top of the drive shaft. That's going to get in the way when we pull the water pump off, so that's got to go. Prying that off now. It's pretty, it is pretty stiff. Anyway, pull the shift rod out. Now I'll pull off the water pump and the cover. And I'll leave the cover on, but I might as well pull it off. Yeah, water pump really wasn't too bad. At this point it's out, but it's still extremely stuck in there. I need to pull it up a little bit more, so I need to get some kind of spacer between the puller bolt and the prop shaft to give me a little more pull. So the tool comes with a center guide, so I'll be using that. It's a nice, good, thick, strong looking spacer. That'll do it. the car TV. Don't know where that was. Hello, that, that's pretty nice and clean looking too. Alright, I got my large snap ring pliers to get inside of here and pull up the snap rings. Pretty obvious what they do, I guess. Fixture loosened. Get the out of here. So even while sitting dry for this, who know well, who knows how long, but these this gear is still incredibly nice looking. I have a wrench on the pinion nut, so I got to find something to grab the uh, top of the drive shaft. I don't have a drive shaft socket for this small of a drive shaft, so I can't use the one I usually do, but we'll make do. So there's a flat spot on the drive shaft here, which conveniently half inch wrench fits on. So that should do it. If the wrench will stay put. I think I needed something a little more grab, so I switched over to this crescent, put the wrench back on, and give it a try again. That did it. Alright, pity nut is about off. <laughs> Next fear was best not sliding out. Yeah, that sucks. All right, let me find my puller. So the drive shaft puller I have is too big for this little guy, so we're gonna have to get creative. My plan of getting creative is a uh, flare nut tool. I've done this once before; it worked incredibly well. Let's hope the uh, results are about the same, which apparently they probably won't be, considering. 
quite grab on there. Let's try it right there. We'll see what happens. Yeah, this might work. Might not. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So I have the drive shaft puller underneath the flaring tool, which is clamped on. I put on some longer bolts inside of here. Um, previously what I did was just some threaded rod down this back hole right here, and that worked. But this uh, probably worked a little better, actually. It's already moving. Drive shaft nut still on there a little bit. And there she goes. So, not much to it. Fairly simple. So if you uh, need to make shift some tools, that's kind of how to do it. So, let me show you if the camera focuses. It doesn't seem like it is. There we go. See the scratch? It's the only real damage done. So just keep that in mind. Pin your nut on out of there. So there's our pinion. No rust either. Should now be able to get our entire assembly out. Looks like I might be in gear. That fixed. The assembly pretty pretty stuck in there. Like it ain't it ain't moving. I don't know what happened. It's in reverse. Well, or at least the shifter's all the way down, so I know that's not an issue. But it feels like the uh, front shifter assembly just ain't moving. And I uh, can't figure out why. So the only guess I have is if there was an impact or something, it reshaped the front nose of the gear case. Let me show you what I mean. See what's it's flat right here? I'm kind of wondering if it should have more of a, a bow to it. And uh, if that's jammed on my front little assembly, causing it not to come out. Try the old tappy approach. I did nothing. Let's try uh, prying it out of there. So I have this between the shifter and the uh, housing. I'm pushing some force forward while jiggling the back up. And that did it. So let's have a look to see if we can figure out why it was stuck. Well, I don't see any damage at all. I don't see any corrosion on the sides here. Got some gunk right about there. But, I don't know, nothing really looks like it would have held it in. So I don't know. Also, that front gear, it looks great too. So, perhaps it wasn't sitting in a field with no oil in it for too long. But, who knows. So off camera, I swapped out some coils and a uh, power pack to try to see what the ignition problem was. Um, Neither a new coil nor a new power pack made the cylinders fire. So that leads us with our stator here. The stator assembly is $386. So this engine needs a gear case, at least a housing, and a uh, $380 stator. So 
that's kind of expensive. Now, if you've seen my 9.9 15 .9 horsepower rebuild, I replaced one of these stator rings with the uh, individual components. You know, a pickup coil, a trigger, and a stator. And it worked perfectly fine. I'm kind of thinking that this would be the same case, meaning you don't need it. Um, I would probably swap that out should it not need a gear case too. But since it does, it's it's kind of pointless. Not pointless, but... So you could probably weld up that crack in the gear case. Um, I don't know what that would cost. I'm guessing a welder probably cost $100 and then it's a part to uh, get that fixed. Uh, let's check on eBay real quick. See what they go for. Uh, it looks like one sold for 330 for a uh, for a new lower. So that's that's kind of cool. Let's uh, take off the sold listings. So five three. Let's take out the zero out of the part number. See if that shows anything. Yeah, just looks like junk. So probably I don't know, six to eight hundred dollars to get this engine going, plus a water pump, plus a lower unit seal kit, plus two carburetor repair kits, plus fuel lines, plus ignition parts, plus fuel pump rebuild kit, spark kit. It, it you start getting pretty expensive on this thing. I could probably be a thousand dollars in that thing pretty easily to get it going again. So did I? Did I? Was it a? Was it a bad buy? Probably. Would I have done it again? Yeah. There's, you know, an easy 150 bucks for the parts there. So, that's good. Um, I'll save it should I ever find another another uh, gear case or lower. Or maybe I'll get another one of those engines that needs a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'll throw it over in the, uh, in the pile for the time being. But Yep, that is the end of this video. So, my advice. Check the gear case oil before you buy an outboard. If it's empty... Probably got a crack in there. All right, everybody. Have fun.